Okay, so we are here to talk about multi-way system. And um, <clears throat> for people who are on our previous live stream, I apologize for not getting to your comments. We will get to them uh, in the next live stream of that series about entity objects. Okay, <clears throat> so multi-way systems. Uh, proving to be very valuable in physics, but also valuable for lots of other purposes. And we want to try to mainstream them and get them into the main system. So we have um, a function repository function, which has, you know, one thing that I am so confused by, in these, in these summary tables for function repository items, there's, you know, it's not showing the full depth of what's underneath there. See that? There's much more there. Can we... Um, who's PMing here? Evan, I'm here. Okay. So you understand what I'm saying, that this doesn't look like it's a complete picture of what's underneath. Yeah. And the question is, for the, for the folks who are dealing with the documentation, why is that happening? Mm-hmm. I mean, it can, it can only be so, I mean, it can only fit four page widths of stuff. I know that, but what, it should be the top and then it should have a dot, dot, dot. That's what we had agreed previously. If well, it so has more stuff. There's dot, dot, dot after the last one, though. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, let's talk about nest graph first, because nest graph is very close to multi-way system, but isn't quite. And nest graph has some infuriating little um, loose ends. I mean, so for instance, if I say um, nest graph hash plus three comma hash plus five ampersand start from zero, five steps, I get some beautiful thing like this, right? But nest graph has some corner cases that are completely bonkers. And, and the question is, what, what is different between multi-way system and nest graph? Right, so let me I mean, show you. The certainly there are a bunch of, certainly there are just a bunch of differences with, you know, different output forms. Right. Like where the edge is annotated with which rule it used and stuff like that. Right, which will be very useful for, so for nest graph, one can imagine, you know, since it's always coming out from a list here, but by the way, who do we have here who is, who is responsible for nest graph? Me, I'm here. Okay. Charles. Okay. So right now these edges are untagged, right? Well, they can't possibly be tagged because the, the function just returns a list. You no, but they can be tagged with which right number, which element of the list came from that, you know, produced that edge. Well, I think this is one of the things that makes nest graph difficult is that <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it has no usage where you give it a list of functions. And so instead it has to kind of voodoo around to figure out whether this thing that you returned, uh, basically how to unpack it. Right. And, and for example, if you have a single element, but that single element happens to be a list, then there are problems and stuff like that. So, I mean, I think that the, the I, mean, I guess you can rely on which element of the list is being returned, but you don't even know if the same number of elements is being returned. That's okay. Like, you know, I mean, if you so look long at the documentation it's... examples. Well, so long, yeah. as, so long as this is, I mean, I could say something like, you know, if even Q hash, you know, I don't know, hash plus one, otherwise this. Well, but I think by the way, you don't even have to put the hash plus one in a list. It will magically figure it out. That's one of the things that's strange. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Seems to be true. Right. Yeah, so I think that that has a corner case consequence for things which are in a list. That goes crazy. Oh. Right. I mean, there is, I mean, that's not per se new or specific to Nest Graph. It's, uh, there is the general, you know, 
fact that we need to make a distinction between a list of vertices or a vertex itself or a list of vertices which is actually a vertex in the graph framework. You know, we have been working on it. We have to balance between the performance and that, you know. So there is those cases and we have a example for next graph we hope to fix later on where, you What's know, the design? when you give a list. Well, there is not per se design. It's just that we need to, you know, the way you specify the, a, you know, if you give a list, like in this case, it's a function, which the first, you know, the first instance is a list. We assume that that list is, you know, is actually a vertex. It's not a list of vertices. So, and it's, it's actually more a matter of implementation because internally we do some flattening and some mapping for efficiency. And then, you know, we have the issue with, you know, the stability in general. So I'm confused. Right, but so I guess for, for, for multi-way system though, you could have something where you just, you just require that uh, whatever you're returning be in a list, right? Because then that way, if you're returning a, even if you're returning only a single argument, you know, that should be wrapped in list because then that means that if that single argument happens to be a list, you know, you sort of have that two yeah, layers of list, which is the unambiguous case with nest graph. So I think that's what produces some of the confusion is that nest graph accepts the, you know, if, if you give it, if you just return a number, it's unambiguous that, oh, you can just wrap that in the list and it will work. But then the, the problem is, is when, when people then try and return lists because it works for individual numbers. So it might work for a list as well because it's just an expression, but then it interprets a list in a special way. Right? I mean, because even it, in the... Yeah. Even in the original design, right, you take the second argument is an expression, right? That expression can still be a list, which is ambiguous. Right. Th this right, is why right, we exactly. right. this is why we disambiguate the list and Wolfram model cases in the implementation of multi-way system. Right. So you require that it be wrapped in a you, you know, you require that 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 for a multi-way system that you return a list of elements, right? Right, and right. So but the point is, because, yeah. the, because there are two canonical systems that operate at list depths of two and three, for the list depth three case, we require that you specify that case explicitly, because otherwise it's dangerous to infer it for precisely this reason. Okay. Well, wait a minute. This is a case where... Hmm. So, I mean, you can even see you, also you, you usage see, lines. You see my point, right? You, if, if, you, if you see a list of depth three, Generically, in a multi-way system implementation, you don't know whether that's a list of list substitution initial conditions or a single Wolfram model initial condition. Mm -hmm. Can it not? I mean, pr presumably you can. You can. Well, okay. I don't know how the how the current multi-way system function works, but I thought that it was also kind of just a purely general thing that you could just give it an expression and some functions, and it will figure it out. No, no, it, it, it is. But then, in order to implement the shorthands you have to have some way of specifying which case you're talking about. But, but so, I mean, uh, presumably though, right, if, if I want to, to use this function to map over something and I'm going to use, right, you, you don't want it so that the shorthand happens to collide with the data structure I'm using that I want to right. move over, so to speak. Right. So look, we've got this string substitution thing. So what we could do here is to require that everything has a wrapper. So like for the strings case, we could require the wrapper substitution system. Which of course internally is what we do. All right, fair enough. Right, I mean, I mean, that it, seems like the I, consistent thing to do. At some as, point. as I say in the agenda, the canonical form is, you know, is string arrow rules. I know, <clears throat> which I think would be better it were, if it was, you know, a wrapper and which we can do once we have a wrapper for Wolfram model, for example. Yeah. In, I mean, the, the this is what I wanted to discuss, that, that exactly how it's going to work, that you want to implement a system version of multi-way system without implementing a system version of Wolfram model. That seems extremely messy to me. Right. Well, is there well, a good why? reason not to implement a system version of Wolfram model? Yeah. No, it was just that you you said on whatever, it was, the, the meeting where we, did, where we discussed this, where we discussed the current meeting, you said it made more sense to implement multi-way system than to implement Wolfram model because you were worried about, or either you or Max, I forget, were worried about um, burning in the sort of structure of Wolfram model too early. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, it doesn't have to support, like, look, 
again, if, if, if you just allow, I mean, if it supports the general case, then you can just use the function repository function rule for model. And, you know, and then maybe if, it, if multi-way system has optimizations for Wolfram model, then, you know, maybe it can do a little bit of a hacky thing and it can see, you know, because if it's looking at the wrappers for the functions to do optimizations, like if it's looking at the function as a string substitution system, it can look for a resource function as well. Right, right. Although we, th there are some significant issues that I faced with having resource function wrappers to do with um, mismatched contexts and things. Uh, but we, yeah, we, we may be able yeah. to hack around that. Okay. Well, yeah. isn't the Wolfram model function already in in the function repository? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it is. The, the issue is when you call if you call a Wolfram model wrapper, at least with the resource function version of multi-way system. I don't know if it'll be different if you call it from system, but th there are issues with which co you know what context the resource function is in what, versus what context multi-way system is in. That sure. Yeah. I haven't yet been able to find a, a non-hacky solution to. Right. But, I mean, it doesn't have to actually call the resource function. It can just see the head resource function of quotes, Wolfram system, whatever it's called. Right. Okay. All right. So let, let's look. All right. So I've got a question immediately, which is changing nest graph to tag its edges. Is there a reason not to do that? I, I, I mean, it's just, it's, it's very undefined because I think that like, look, you could do it with the index. But then I guess also if it returned an association, then maybe you could support that case as well, although I don't think that's currently supported. Is but... that supported, Charles? No. Okay. That I mean, that seems nice. like it, it, if, if, I mean, it's mostly nice though, if you do this, this edge labeling thing. But what, right, would it tag the, what would it tag the edges with? I mean, the index I think the or key. if it's an association, the key. Okay, the other question is, what happens about multi-edges? What, what, what does Nest Graph do with multi-edges right now? I believe it, it, it elides them, doesn't it? I mean, um, we, we generate the graph. If there are multiple edges, we generate them. I don't think there is. No, you don't. Look at that. Well, I think that, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that Nest Graph does not, does not assume that... Um, that the function is deterministic, right? So, so if, for example, you know, if I have some function that, uh, I don't know, let's say I, I'm doing like that example from the documentation where like it finds synonymous words or something like that, right? And it makes that network. Um, so if I, you know, give it the word, you know, whatever, fish, and it finds synonymous words, and then one of those words is also, you know, back synonymous to fish, then I think it checks for synonymous words to fish again, right? It doesn't say, oh, I've already been to this vertex. I don't need to check it. Is that right? Why? That, because, yes, that's correct. Because actually, I mean, one of the first, I mean, at the time when we built Nesgraph, one of the thought was essentially to build a caller. So if you are traversing a website or such a thing, you, you know, you, you know, you traverse again the link twice. You don't, call, you know, you don't generate some multiple, you know, multiple edges. And we consider it, you know, at some point that maybe we should have an option where somebody can specify that, right? So that you want to generate your graph and take into account multiple edges or not. So we just have to get want, I mean, Look, multiple, what's the analogous option multi-way system for multiple edges? Include event instances true. Okay. Right. So. so, I mean, there are two things here. Look, the multi-edge case, we really would like that. Really will be useful for Nest Graph. I mean, the non-determinism is a different issue from the multi-edges, right? Yeah. Well, so, so wait. Let me let me just clarify one other thing, though. So, if you know, for example, if you write the web crawler case, does that uh, will it ever visit the same website twice? Like in the sense, will it ever? You know, if I'm doing a web crawler and I start at you know Google.com, uh, will it? If it happens to loop back around. Will it again ask for the you know hyperlinks out of Google.com, or will it say I've already been here? Uh, he will ask it if, in terms of implementation, he will just ask him. Oh. I think we should have an option for whether it does that, because I think the mathematical cases where you absolutely do not want that. Right. right I mean, this is again the determinism thing. 
I mean, so there's an assumed determinism versus not. I mean, I assume that's the only reason why you'd care about it. I mean, maybe there's some other yeah. reason. I mean, if there's a random number, look, if I put in here, It's going to make a total mess. I don't even but know what. The critical what... thing is, you see that some of these have an out degree of three, or of greater than two. What does that mean? So it returned to that place. Yeah, and then it ran it again. I assume. Mm hmm. Yeah. Right. Is that right, Charles? Um. Yes. Sure. Okay, whereas if it had cached it, it would not do that, right? So there, by the way, there is a yes. question of if you if you if you have this option that that word includes the multiplicities, um, will it if it's doing this caching, how should the should it calculate what the multiplicities would have been had it not cached, or should it just give you the the multiplicities, you know, with the caching, so to speak? I don't understand that. What do you mean? The, okay. You mean so, 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 when we were talking about before is the the, the issue of adding mul edge multiplicities for multi graphs, right? Mm -hmm. So, oh, I see. You know, suppose it goes in a giant loop and it goes around this loop five hundred times, and so you have a five hundred thick, you know, multi edges, right? So the question is, how does that interact with this? Because if I say this is deterministic, you can cache. Does that mean that it should not include that five hundred multi edge because it would never do that because it would just you know. It would just realize it's wasting its time, or should it realize, or, or should it calculate how what the multiplicities would? I think have it been? should calculate what they would have been, and the caching is only the question of whether you make the assumption that you don't. It's an optimization, you know. Yeah. Okay. It's a you know basically it's almost a method option, you know, deterministic or something method. Um, I think like it's cache. useful to know sometimes all the multiplicity service caching. Oh, which? So if you if you have a multi-way system which you assume, uh, the, I mean, is deterministic, mm -hmm. then you don't care to return the same pass multiple times, but you might still care if two evolution functions you have return the same result. I didn't understand the the import of that. So, <clears throat> what are you saying? Yeah. So, Go ahead. Though I don't have you know any you know really good reason to reject the caching or such, but um, I believe it is it goes down too much in the implementation and expectation behavior. For next graph, from what I'm assuming is that well, you know, the internet is a graph. You apply next graph, you traverse the website. So what we are doing is just a basic traversal, a bread first. And we just keep traversing. We don't do any trick which, you know, based on the implementation will affect the output. Right? Okay. And then we keep well, it. Charles, this is not going to be, I hadn't even remembered that we built this for, for website traversal. Well, this but, function but even, is being even used for primarily website for website traversal. Things. I mean, even even for website traversal, though, right? If you if you assume that the hyperlinks aren't changing, then you don't want to traverse a website twice, right? I mean, even for just breadth first search, it's you know common. Like if you're doing Dijkstra or something, right? You sort of set it up so that you're not going to double traverse things that you reach in more than one way. So I think it's you know this is like a valid option even just for breadth first search. What does breadth first search do with that? Yes and no. Right. Because it's a matter of use, and you know, and in this case, we, you know, we, I mean, the use here is the multi-way system. We want to build it on top of Nest Graph, so there is that point of view which is, you know, valid, and definitely we should add that. But we should also make sure that the function remains general enough for other behaviors. I know. So look, the default. You know, if we can determine that it's a deterministic function, then we don't have to worry about, then we can just assume that it's cached, 
right? If we can determine, if we can look at the function and say, there's nothing in this function that could be non-deterministic, which we could readily do. I mean, you know, is it? I think that, that 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 that's introducing more kind of magic into this into this function, which I don't think you want. Well, this question we can say automatic. We can have an automatic setting for the determinism thing. I mean, I think it should probably preserve what it does already in the default case. Maybe. I mean, it doesn't matter. Clearly, if the function is deterministic, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but I'm not sure if you can can always tell if it's deterministic. I mean, like an example is again the web crawl example. If you if you request a website and and you get its hyperlinks, it's probably deterministic, but it might not be. Well, no, that one we shouldn't assume it does not No, we should not assume it's external it. input. But if it if it's you know sure. the uh, some okay, um, okay. I mean, I don't Let know me... if there's any. I mean, look, this is a, maybe a more general thing that we might want. Which is just something that 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 looks at a piece of code and just has you know a directory yes. of here are all the non-deterministic functions. I agree. I think it will be very worthwhile to have as a as a pure code analyzer. But but there might be weird stuff like you know maybe it turns out that dollar processor count is technically non-deterministic on Linux in version whatever and, and you know. Well, I'll tell you another problem that simplify might be non-deterministic because it depends on absolute time. Oh God, yeah. I mean, everything that depends on absolute time. Right, but many things do. I mean, because right, tons of math stuff. Right. I mean, or you know, if you run lots... out of memory, nothing is deterministic. Right, but I think it, it's a. Um. So this is basically a deterministic code queue. Is the concept there? Can we can we put that in an in an ILD meeting? Can somebody take it? Is it Devin who's PMing here? Yeah, yeah, take I can take that. Okay, let's talk about breadth first scan just for a second. A function that I have essentially never used because I consider it basically unusable. Would Charles like to comment on this? I mean, I know you use it in. I think it's pretty nice. What's that? I think it's pretty useful for optimization purposes. Well, this, yeah. I mean. There is several sides, right? I mean, we, we introduced it, we made it general enough, you know, with event and such. And sure, you know, for some people or most of the people is too, I mean, it's hard to use. So we are considering, you know, making it simpler for sure, where, right? you know, we make a lot of automation, but it's powerful enough that you can implement bread first and pretty much have a full implementation from the language. Well, I understand, but I, I mean, the question, I don't think this design, I think this design was added at some time when I was not reviewing these things because I just don't understand. I mean, most, this just seems extremely complicated, but Max says he's Ooh. used it successfully. It, I've used it as well. Did you use it? I mean, other than just modifying an example that was already there. Yes, yes. I mean, it, I mean I've, I've used it mostly in other function. It works. Okay. Chris, well, what did you use it for? Uh, I don't even remember. I mean, but it was it was for something where I, I wanted to. Um, I, I remember one time I used I've used it a few times. One time I used it um, because I was just trying to check if, if uh, two vertices on a graph would be connected, um, you know, in some certain case. And I realized I could use some other function to do it. <laughs> but um, but yeah. I mean, but it's it's not actually that hard to use. I mean, they're they're just, you know, the, these different events are fairly well defined, and you know, and are also fairly standard. I mean, where people talk about like frontiers and stuff like that. Okay. Seems incredibly complicated to me. I think uh, it's fairly yeah. straightforward, except for what it returns. So I was very confused by. What does it return? Well, I don't quite remember. What, what it? What it? I mean, what the scan it function. I would expect it to not return anything. I think it does return something. If, also. If it 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 return it return you essentially the input of three three graphs, which essentially it return you the predecessor based on the indexes. Right. So if you give vertex one to n, it will return you w where you know w one is a you know is a parent of w. 
of okay. VR, V1. So it's okay. Essentially, it's an efficient representation of a tree. Fair yeah, it makes sense. Is it documented with the returns? There is the line there. It's, you know, it says, the fourth the line. List, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I guess I missed it. Last time. Okay, all right. Let's, let's take a look then at what the rest of people are asking what multiway systems are. We should just, um, uh, that's a typical multiway system. It, it has a set of rules here, and at every step, it has the capability to, it generates all possible paths based on the application of those rules. And in general, it can, each possible rule application is considered to be an event, and it can generate lots of sort of subgraphs that are so, or not subgraphs, lots of alternative graphs that are based on including event information. Somebody asked the question, can it be used in a, 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 a game tree? Can it be used in a game tree? It sh surely it can be used in a game tree. Right? It, it gives you the set of moves like for tic-tac-toe or something. You should be able, I mean, presumably nest graph can do that too. Is that a true statement? That nest graph can give you the tic-tac-toe uh, um, graph? I think it's actually really harder hard to generate it. What's that? Sorry. You think it's harder to generate it than that? Yeah, I, I think so. I think you have to do uh, like pruning things. Like people use like, what is it? Red, black trees and stuff like that to do it. I mean, you could make a basic one for sure with nest graph, but I don't think you'd be able to, uh, you know, find because you know, of the, the classic thing? tree. Well, uh, okay. At least I'm uh, no, assuming you're talking the, about the, the classic. The definition of the time. Hmm? Uh, I mean, there's no, I mean, it's, it's not the, the, that that key function you are giving is not a trivial one. You can actually just define for a game, for any arbitrary game. Sorry, what do you say? I mean, given a, given a board, given a tic-tac-toe board, I can say what the possible next tic-tac-toe boards are. Why can't I just put that into nest graph? I think you can. That's easy. Okay. All right. So then what, what fails? I don't think anything fails. I mean, I I was just thought you were talking about the classic tic tac toe tree is the is the like optimal move tree. Oh, I see. No, I, was, I, mean, I was talking about like the four thousand node. You know, all possible. I actually, I mean, all possible I game. More. I think if you don't play optimally, there it's a very big tree actually, or a relatively big tree. If you don't, if you don't remove symmetry and stuff, but I, I don't know. I don't think so. I think I seem to remember it's a, it's actually I can look it up. I think it was in the NKS book if I remember correctly. Okay, whatever. Um, oh come on, tic tac toe network four. Does it say four thousand five thousand four hundred and seventy eight nodes? Okay. Um. Should be in the function. I mean, it should be in the data repository. Devin, that's a, a small point. We might as well put that in the data repository at some point. Sure. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> okay. So, what is the difference ultimately between nest graph and multiway system? So, multiway system by default is right now in our function is just generating the series of states in what we might call the cosmological rest frame. That, what we see here, right? Yeah. Well, a multi-way multi system acknowledges, multi-way system, well, how, how does it work though if there are loops back up? Uh, okay, so that's a good point. That's the difference between the evolution function and the states graph. The evolution graph and the states graph. Jonathan, do we have a good example of that? Um, yeah, I mean, there are a bunch of I put in the documentation. Okay, can we find The one? evolution graph will keep going, the states graph will loop around. Yeah, right. So the, the, evolution evolution graph will, yeah. the evolution graph includes step numbers by default. Okay, yeah. And the states graph does not. Right, so, I mean, there are many options here, like, like um, all these things about um, uh, putting weights on these edges. So there's a multigraph and there's waiting. 
both of those that could for be multiplicities. Useful. Yes, or... those are multiple. Those are well. One is waiting. Yes, these are multiplicities, but they're also things which are. How do these work, Jonathan? The 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 they're waiting. Those are waiting, for... those are waiting by event multiplicity include state path weights mul uh, weights by the number of distinct paths that lead to a given state. Oh, I see. So it's distinct paths from the root that lead to that state. Yep. If you scroll down, there's an example of that. Nice. Yeah, right. Okay, great. And if there's a loop, it goes bonkers. Uh, so yeah, so state path weights will assume evolution graphs in general. Well, that okay. says states graph, but it happens to be the evolutions graph as well. Right. Right, but what does it do? Did, didn't we agree that there was some reasonably sensible thing to do if there's a loop? Um, I don't think so. I, I, I just said we should do the standard Bellman Ford thing and then complain if there's a loop or just default to using the evolution graph. What is the standard Bellman Ford thing? Which is to complain if there's a loop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Because you, because, it, all right, fair, fair because enough. Because, you know, in the context of solving all pairs shortest paths problems, if you have a negative cycle, uh, you know, a negative sum cycle, then that's, that, the, you know, your algorithm won't terminate. So, so just, just, I mean, the states graph will equal the evolution graph minus, you know, maybe some details about the internals of how the vertices are represented, as long as there isn't a loop, right? Right, as long as there's global hyperbolicity, so to speak. Okay, so, 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 so then, shouldn't it just, shouldn't it just throw an error if you ask, if you do what it's doing right here, where you you ask for the, yes, the multiplicities minus the states graph, which is In principle, use the evolution graph. In principle, yes, but so the reason I didn't do it that way was because the include state path weights and include state weights are more general than, they don't depend on what property you are requesting. They are a general option for the whole multi-way system. So in fact, you, you can demonstrate that if you take that thing and you, you do include state path weights and then you request state weights rather than states graph, you get just a list of- State weights here? Yeah. State weights, I think, yeah. That's okay. Nice. So then, so the, so the point is, it doesn't know whether you're requesting an evolution graph or a states graph when you request everything. So it could complain, but it felt more natural just to assume that everything was an evolution graph unless told otherwise. I, I agree, we should have some warning message if you request a states graph on this. But, but by, by the way, this is a detail, but is there a reason that's not an association? No. Okay. I mean, presumably when, when it's, right, when you're not in, Right. When you're the, not the, collapsing the reason multiplicities, it's not, then it, the reason it's not an yeah. association is that graphs generally, you know, graph weights are generally passed as lists, I believe. Charles, can you Charles correct me yeah. if I'm wrong? Yes. Why? Well, they predate associations. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. Fine. Yes. But okay. So just to get a sense for, I mean, the the problem, the point with okay. So there are but, two directions of generalization for the multi-way system thing. By the way, Stephen, sorry. Uh, yeah. If you want to do a more explicit comparison with Nest Graph, I just sent you. It it, it hasn't been approved by WFR yet, but I've just sent you the WFR version of a multi-way function system. Which is basically the multi-way analog of uh, nest graph, right? Well, okay, here's, here's the thing, right? So multi-way function system, as you originally scoped it, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because- Great. So to, 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 yeah. the, the, to answer, I mean, this kind of answers the question you were ask, uh, asking earlier about the relationship between nest graph and multi-way system. You know, nest graph is just multi-way system if you only specify a state evolution function and you don't specify anything else. Right. If you only request things that require knowing the state evolution function, you just get nest graph. So here, if I can do that, and then I say states graph. Yeah, you'll get the same as you would have got from uh, nest graph. Well, except I get more nicely labeled things. That's very nice. I mean, I prefer that. I'm going to use that. I assume um, that's just a graph, by the way, just with styling. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, and, but, and then, okay, but if you run that for six steps and then do include state pathway, uh, sorry, include uh, event instances, sorry, um, you should start to see multiplicities, which you don't actually, see in nest graph. But by the way, sorry, is it using just graph layout, uh, layered, whatever, something like that? Or is it is it specifying the layout itself? It's not specifying anything. It's just default graph layout. <clears throat> okay. 
and it will it will go non layered. Yeah. By the way, Charles, I think layered graph plot should default should not allow itself to go less than aspect ratio or half, unless it is. I mean, because I think that this is stupid. Okay, if well, I say, what what yeah, can it do? Well, here, look, 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 look. I get carry tree of a thousand, and then I say layered graph plot. Okay, and I get that. So what I do essentially 100% of the time is say aspect ratio arrow a half. When it gets long and narrow like that. Charles, do you want to comment on that? No, no, that's a, that's a valid point. I mean, yes, it's, uh, yeah, we, you know, I saw your email, you are looking into that. So. Okay, fine. There, there are some cases, by the way, where I specifically don't do that because you know you you have some you, you actually want to look at what the individual vertices are, and you can't see it. You can't possibly see it if you squish it like like you've done there. Like I've done here. Yeah, I mean, I, I right. Like if you want to zoom in and see what's going on at the bottom, you can't possibly do that. Well, but you can't do it here either. Yes, you can. If you if you oh. grab it by the bottom, grab it by the bottom. Two things: you can export it, but also you can grab it by the oh, bottom, yeah. right? And then you can scroll horizontally. Oh wow! I see. Okay, Charles, that's another issue. What? How do we get the best? Of, well, how do we get the best of both worlds for this? Well, I mean, there was one thing we decided at the time when we did the. Uh, Home for graph is essentially to, you know, as much as possible, not change the default graphic options, right? Well, except this is using aspect ratio to automatic, which is, yes, I see, the right. graphics options. The graphics options. Um, Especially because people combine and manipulate things. So more you change, more stuff. Yeah, all right. Okay. Well, fair enough. Maybe I'm I'm Christopher's argument is not a terrible one. I, I had not really noticed this this effect here. Okay, so the, what what are the include event what what are you saying? Include, oh, include event? event instances. This is where you'll see it differs from um nest, from the nest graph output. Right. So that's showing multiple events. Now if I were to say Evolution events graph. Which didn't do layering, but this is now showing. I see. And then if I say, can I say. I just have to say layered graph plot there. Right. So that's now showing the events. That's pretty nice. Um, I mean, yeah, so, sorry, the, the thing I was, I was saying is, yeah, multi-way function system uh, as spec'd is just the nest graph case, right? Yes, it is. So, but, that, but that's just multi-way system with a state evolution function and, and everything else unspecified. That's not interesting. You can, I mean, like, this, you can do that easily. The, the, the interesting part is you have to, you know, defi is defining event functions and uh, decomposition functions and things, which is domain specific. So like in the case of, so I, I've modified this slightly so it, so it's, it deals specifically with the case of functions over the integers, um, because then at least you uh, there is a meaningful sense in which you can construct an event decomposition function. So, so by so, the way, is there a reason why the the sort of I don't know what to call them the rule vertices, the orange yellow vertices, is there a reason why they're not just edge annotations? Like the third um, argument to directed edge. Well, they could be, but I mean, there, there are yet more things that that. Um, the the main reason was to support evolution causal graph, because we wanted to have the events also be connected by stuff like this. This. Okay. Um, and there isn't we well we couldn't find a straightforward way of doing that. But I agree that there could be an option to just have the event be. But I think if we say um, evolution events graph structure, oh, that's still extra nodes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, th there is a way you could do it 
because for you know obviously for each event you can get its actual event specification and then you could just overlay that on top of the edge but we don't you could do it manually but we we could also add an option for that all right so the issue here is in general we've got many different functions that can appear as the first argument and we've got look it seems to me we've got special cases like substitution system well what does substitution system do if if i were to give it like this substitution system here. Okay, and I say substitution system, and I just use that. Okay, now I apply that to A. What do I get? That's a bad example. Let's apply it to A A A A. Why does it do that? Oh, because it's not a multi-way. It's, it's not the multi-way case. Yeah. Oh my God. Gosh, so I see. So really the multi-way thing is a headdress of substitution system, right? It's not, it's saying, it should be saying, if we did this with multi-way system now, and we just did even just one step, can we do this? Yeah, we can do this, right? Splaff, what does that mean? Why did it do that? Great example of a case where, okay, so there we go. So that is showing, in that case, all four of the different rewrites that were possible for AAA. But, but see now, multi-way system is using magic from the fact that it knows about substitution system. Like, uh, so yes, not right here. But in general, it's using magic to, to label, for example, which rule is being applied where. For sure, yes. yes. And, and it's also using magic even to figure out, I mean, nest graph couldn't do this because nest graph has no way to get all the outputs from the substitution system. It only has a way to get... Um, well, no, this is nest list. What you've done right here is probably just nest list. Yes, right. I understand. But I mean, if, if I were to say, if I were to put the graph thing here, if I were to say states graph, right, the, the problem is that this information, substitution system just applied as a function to this will only give one result, namely this. Right. And, and the point, even if it didn't, even if it gave multiple results, that would only be sufficient to define a state evolution function. So you could construct a nest graph from it, but you couldn't construct a multi-way system from it. Right. And so you're saying we have a, a, a dictionary of places where we know what the event decomposition function is and all those kinds of things. Right. Right. Look, my main conclusion is this is quite a lot of design. Um, and I think we're not going to get it done right now. I mean, the yeah, thick and multi branch graphs would be useful. Yeah, I agree. By the way, just in the in the in the space of things, I've been looking at combinators, and what I realized is that there is a notion of space for combinators as yet unworked out that will allow us to have the whole same formalism. I mean, it, it just, you mean beyond just the tree form? Yes, yes. There's a notion of space, as in in defining in defining the evaluation front evaluation front you essentially are getting a foliation that gives you instantaneous kind of notions of space yeah i mean you can you can represent the combinator as a tree form yeah i mean but but which it, tree you get depends on which foliation you're using but that's true of any multi-way system you know every space like hypersurface I know. defines a different expression I, I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm just. So the, uh, Why is it specific to the combinator case? Because it, in the hundred years that combinators have existed, it has not been studied for combinators. That's the only reason it's. But we've dis we've discovered it hasn't even been studied for integers, so it was like not entirely surprising. Well, fair enough. By the way, I studied it for matrices yesterday as well. That has a whole other wild, um, cool, wild uh, character. Um, but, unfortunately. By the way, yeah. Oh, sorry. I was going to say the the, the multi-way function system for the integer case. Um, the the canonical way I could think of doing it, because obviously in order to define event decomposition functions, you need to have a notion of 
um, elements because you need to know what you know where elements got created, where they got destroyed, and so on. Right. Yes. What? What? I mean. So, so my approach. I, I tried two approaches. One was to look at individual digits as elements, which seems stupid. no, that's completely crazy. <laughs> yeah, and the other, which seems slightly less crazy, was to look at prime factorizations, and to basically treat the prime factorization like. But it was why are you doing that? I don't understand. Why do you need an event decomposition function of that type? I mean, isn't this good enough? That this is just saying nine turns into uh, fourteen and twelve. Yeah, but this is nothing you couldn't have done with nest graph. The power of multi-way system comes in the things that aren't the state evolution function, like the event decomposition function. Where do you use the event decomposition function? Or well, causal dependency. You I need see. to know Space when element... like causal dependency. Mm. Because causal there dependency. There's no such thing as space-like causal dependency. But there is. You're 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 breaking it out in terms of. Well, no, no, no. You're, I'm, you're saying that a subpart of nine, a subpart of fourteen, you know, a subpart of nine is what affects fourteen. Uh, well, of, of the events, yes. So what you what you have to look at is so the, you know the way I'm currently structuring it is you say we're applying this function to this integer. This function has a prime factorization. Which you know the, which prime factors were created by which prior events. That is wild. It seems to be the canonical way of doing it for integers. I think it's totally weird. I mean, I, I think it's, look, I think. What's the, what's the alternative? There, there, there yeah, is, I, I don't, I don't see one. I don't know. I, I'm not sure there is another, like, yeah, a, but, like, but, but that, this is a concept of breaking. Uh, this is why I talked about space. It's a concept of like for a combinator, it's fairly straightforward. It's got a whole giant expression and you can yeah. look at the sub pieces of that expression and see, but the problem here is, which I'm thinking of in general in some type of space, but in, the problem here is that there's no obvious way that this thing is broken into sub parts. And but, it's but there is, dependent. it's, it's I mean, unique factorization. Yeah, but so what about, do we want to what about complex sub numbers? What? Why do we want to break it into subparts? To do event decomposition. Because you want the event to be related to a subpart of the object, which I think may not be doable in this case. OK, well, I mean, it, it I is mean, doable. I think that makes sense in this case. Because integers are atomic by design. No, they're not. They Show us an example where, where it will break it into by factorization. What do I ask for here? We should get the causal graph. That is we, wild. John. We've been blessed Absolutely by one of the, we've been blessed by one of the very few fields that satisfies unique factorization. I agree. If we if we wanted to make it work for like cyclotomic integers or something, it, we like we'd be in trouble. But. You can't be serious that this is this is based on prime factorization. Uh, I believe this version is. Yeah, I, I tried a few different versions. <laughs> um, that's wild. surely it's not a unique way of doing it. No, for sure not. And we need some other. Uh, uh, Andre on the live stream is saying sieve theory is an alternative for prime factorization. Um, sieve theory is in prime sieves? I don't know. I don't know. Um, if he means like sieve theory is in sieve of Eratosthenes. No, I don't. I suspect some other type of sieve. But, um, but that's wild. I hadn't even thought about the causal graphs for these things. Um, OK, well, <laughs> now in. you've got them. <laughs> OK. Um, I have to go to another meeting, unfortunately. I, we, we really need to continue this. Um, I apologize for cutting it short. Uh, just a comment for Sid on the live stream. These are these are graphs that we're generating by algorithms. These are not graphs that represent, uh, for example, knowledge of the world. These are these are very much things that are being generated. All right. I unfortunately have to go to my other meeting, um, and I know I'm following up with uh, um, you guys. Uh, Certainly, Max and possibly Jonathan later. Yes. Um, okay. Sorry, got to go. Um, talk to you all soon then. Bye. Bye. Bye.